Welcome back to Fire Branch Farm. I am Amanda. So, how do you become self-sufficient with your garden? I think that one of the best things to having a garden is the food security that comes with it. So, how does one do this? What are some steps or what are some tips that um, can help you become self-sufficient and increase your food security? Well, first of all, set easy, attainable goals. Um, for example, pick a favorite meal that maybe your family eats once a week. Do you eat mashed potatoes, um, baked potatoes maybe? So plant potatoes. Um, maybe your family likes salads. And actually, I think salad greens, uh, and you can do all kinds of things. You can do oriental greens, you can do lettuces, kales arugulas, um, even radishes, those kind of things. But you can do salads with those. Plus, a lot of those greens go really good in soups and stews. So there's a lot of options with those. But say you wanted to make have potatoes and then have like the greens. So start there. Plant enough of those for your family to eat that meal once a week or to use those ingredients once or twice a week for you know the three or four months that you're gardening so start there and plan out for that and that's a great way to start because it's easy it's attainable it's something you guys are going to eat and use and you're going to have success if you start at that kind of level and start with things that that you will use and have kind of a set goal like I want to replace this meal or these sides so that would be a great place to start um plant more seeds than you want um than the number of plants you want so if you want 10 plants plant 12 to 15 seeds just prepare that you're going to have some loss whether it's they don't germinate um they don't do well as a seedling, maybe you forget to water them, etc. Just plant more. If you have more, you can always give them away or find somewhere to put them in your garden. Um, so more is better, much better in this instance. Also, I think another big thing is adapt your eating to what you, you can grow. Um, Eat more of what you grow, what you can grow in your area. I cannot grow citrus fruits. I still eat them, but I'm not going to attempt to grow something like that. And so I am going to put my energy, my time into other things that I can grow. And along with that topic is adopt a seasonal diet. Eat things when they are in season. We are very used to eating things out of season all year round. You know, we eat tomatoes in January and February if you go to the store. But for self-sufficiency, eat what's in season. So another thing is go to monthly garden plants. Don't just do one plan in spring that shows everything you're going to have. For example, if you put in potatoes, like early potatoes, and they come out of the garden, you know, something can go behind that. But if you only have one plan for the whole season, maybe you just see potatoes in that spot. And that's it. That's potatoes. But if you do like a March, April, May, you can see where there's going to be gaps. So when one crop is going to finish and be done, you can plan ahead of time to have something come behind it rather than just having a blank, unproductive space. So also like greens, you know, they're only going to last so long here and then it's going to get hot and they're going to bolt and then they need to come out. And at that point, I still have plenty of growing season left that I can put something in behind the greens. So I could do peppers, green beans, um, all kinds of stuff could go in after I take those out. And I can see that month by month. So I can see this month this goes in, 
this month, these are done. Now they're, you know, I'm going to plant this in this month behind it. And so go to month by month. This is the first year I tried that. And it was, it was really neat to me. Um, I came up with all kinds of ideals of what I could plant here and there and when to start this and this and how everything's going to work together. It just gave me a much com more complete picture. Um, and do succession planting, which is what I was just talking about. When one thing is done, another thing is ready to go behind it. So that's not saying um, you could put seeds in the ground after something comes out. But even better is if you have seedlings started with that plan in mind. So you have stuff already growing that is ready to take the first thing space when it's done. And so you'll just keep getting stuff out of the same uh, plot you have, the same ground, you're going to be able to double or triple, triple the amount of food and production you're getting off of that same land if you do succession planting. Another thing you could do with that is multi-sow. Um, this is something I am experimenting with this year. Like with my beets, I planted three or four seeds together and they're going to stay together. So I planted them as a set and I took them and when I put them out in the garden, they're going to go as one clump all together. And as they grow, they will push each other out, but they'll still be able to grow. And then you can actually just harvest them individually also. But you can get, you know, four times the amount of crop than doing one beet in that same spot. So that's something to consider and look into also. Um, also, store and preserve your food. So plant a lot out. Keep things going. Succession planting. So you don't ever have dead spots. And then take all that harvest and do something with it. You fresh. You can fresh eat out of your garden, which is great during the whole season. But try to preserve too. I mean, tomatoes, you can do a ton of stuff with tomatoes. You can freeze different things, dehydrate, um, ferment, uh, can obviously, pickle. Um, there's tons of different ways. So do your research, have some plans. No, I want to do, I want to freeze this. I'm going to try to can these. I'm going to make sauce or etc. But have a plan because then when the season is up and your fresh eating is done, you can continue to eat the food that was coming out of the garden if you've preserved it. So you don't, you won't just have three or four months of fresh eating. You can extend that to, you know, a good chunk of a year and provide all of your vegetable type needs. So definitely look into what different foods you can, what different ways you can preserve the different foods. Um, also, save seeds. Uh, plant. The, what's really neat about saving seeds is you can tailor these varieties to your garden, your specific garden. You know, you can pick the plants that perform the best, whether it was disease resistance, um, they produce the most or they produce the best tasting. Um, you can collect seeds from what you want and then next year plant those and then collect the best seeds from those and you can just keep going. And soon you will have a plant that is tailored to your garden. So that's really neat. Plus it saves money. You don't have to keep buying those seeds every single year. You just save your own and plant those out. So, and you can never have enough seeds. Again, you can give them away if you collect too many. And um, I've recently been reading that seeds don't go bad as fast as, as kind of popular belief is. So if you have seeds, you can store them. If you store them cool, dry place, they're going to last. Even more than two, three years, they can last. So save your seeds. Also protect your crops. You don't want to get all the way to harvest time and then something happens to your, your harvest, your fruit. The animals get them, pests get them, weather. But there's some things you can do. For instance, nets um, for berry bushes, things like that. You really need the nets because the birds are going to, they're going to know exactly when those fruit are ripe. 
and they're probably going to beat you to it. So if you want to really get enough, net them. Um, blueberries, all kinds of raspberries, blackberries, grapes. If you do grapes, definitely net them. Um, also, stay on top of pests just throughout the whole growing season. You should be checking your plants daily. Get out there, flip over the leaves, look for eggs, look for pests, and as soon as you see any damage, start hunting for what caused that damage. You can even go out at night with a black light and you can find all kinds of worms, especially like hornworms on tomatoes, and pick them off. So you've got to stay on top of it though. Also keep on top of fungus, keep a lookout for powdery mildew. There's things you can do if you catch these things early. So the whole point, you know, of all of this is to get a successful harvest at the end of it all. And lastly is don't just plant a spring garden. Plant spring and fall garden. So you can do you can do so many varieties in the fall. Again, greens, radishes, kales. Those beets, I mean, those will do really good. Um, also, um, root vegetables like parsnips and carrots. Those will give you a whole fall crop. And you can grow. Like, I'm in zone 6B. You can grow things, you know, through December. You really can. And there's ways, um, obviously, if you have a greenhouse and stuff, you can extend the season that way. But even those crops that I listed in the ground will do okay with light frost. And you can also put a fleece cover over them. And that will help even more with them dealing with frost. But they actually get sweeter. Most of everything that I listed will actually taste a lot better after it goes through a frost. So um, they'll probably taste better in the fall anyway. But they can actually deal with quite a lot. So those are just some tips um, that I was thinking of. I, you know, think about those. And I just really encourage you to try try some of these these tips try some of these things and hopefully you can be on your way to self-sufficiency so thank you for hanging out with me and i will see you next time